Yeah, here we go. This is Lou Martin with my uh, friend Patricia Fitzgerald, who uh, I was just saying here, uh, singing her praises. Uh, she's one of the wonders in my life. I just can barely keep up with you. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you, Lou. Great, great. Well, tell people a little bit about yourself who, who are not familiar with your artwork and you've got a book and you're doing workshops and all great sorts of stuff, yeah? Yeah, um, my name is Patricia, as Susie said. Um, I wasn't always an artist. I was a librarian for 27 years. Yes. So living the life in a box, doing what other people wanted me to do. And I think the challenges of all of that and breaking out of that box, opening it up and discovering who I really am and, you know, the repressed parts of myself. And sometimes in the shadow we find diamonds. And my creativity was certainly in the shadow. Um, and I think that is my journey. You can see one of my pieces behind me here. So yes, I create gorgeous, um, stunning. Thank you. You're so welcome. Um, my dreams. And um, so that's been uh, a recent development over the past few years. It gets stronger and stronger. But I suppose my mission, what I really want to do with all of the work that I do with, between the art and the books is giving people a space to connect with something higher than themselves or their higher selves. Um, to to give that space, whether it's be through the artwork and meditating on it or having it in your space, or whether it's coming to one of my workshops or whether it's reading the books and just finding those parts of yourself that have been hidden. And you know, that's not always easy work. <laughs> yes, yeah. We, we both know that one. Yeah. Well, all right. But you're, uh, yeah, now, darling, you are, I'm just, like I say, I'm just so proud of you. Uh, we, I think we chatted like only a couple years ago. It wasn't that yeah. long ago. Yeah. And uh, you were, I remember you were in bed with your kitty cat and uh, there was Ian Morris was there. And um, uh, we had a, another person who escapes me right now, but the four of us were just kind of hanging out uh, doing a Zoom together because we wanted to meet each other. And uh, yes, you've just taken off like a rocket ship woman, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was probably working in, as a librarian when I last spoke. Yes, you were. You were just getting ready to leave. That's right. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So and 27 years, you were, you were, did you have to give up your pension there? Or what, I had what? to give up everything. Oh <laughs> so God. I had applied for a career break twice, and that wasn't to be. So wow. it kind of came very natural. It was very much a gut feeling. Right. Um, I asked right. the universe for help, and I received the help. And then I went, oh, my God, I have to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it. Yes, you <laughs> have. Then, yeah. Yeah. I don't regret a moment for a moment. Right. No right. Yeah, no, I mean, as they say in Ireland, it's been the making of you. Wouldn't we put it that yeah. way, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, can you tell people how you, you know, made this shift in your life a little bit with a little more detail? Uh, the... Yeah, I suppose it was back in 2012 when I was, my life suddenly unraveled and I divorced quite suddenly. I had to sell my home, uh, everything just went up in the air and I began to experience a huge amount of synchronicity in my life and I began researching that and I was going down the scientific route, I wasn't going down the spiritual route, I was going, none of that woo woo for me. <laughs> um, but it just kept on going and I, there was no denying it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so it eventually led me um, on a spiritual path and it's just been phenomenal, I, I, you know, just the, literally the coincidences and the, the way the path seems to have opened up for me. Yes. So I stumbled upon something. I began creating mandalas very, um, through coincidence that I was, I brought my daughter to Malta that summer, I think it's 2013. Right. Um, and she was seven at the time. Okay. And she asked me to, she kept, you know, pestering me, you know, children, seven year old, and she said, mom, can I get this? It's a little toy that they were selling on the beachfront. Right. So it was a wire mandala that you twist to represent the planets. Okay. So I bought it for her and I kept picking it up myself. You kind of twist it and it would make different shapes. Right. It's very therapeutic, something really right. magical about it. Right. I just found that it calmed me. So I was in the midst of my scientific exploration of, of coincidence and synchronicity at that stage. Sure. And um, I had been reading the works of Carl Jung, uh, who coined the term synchronicity. Yeah. So uh, here I am playing with this little wire mandala and I was also writing I think the creativity wanted to come back out but having been a librarian and kind of given up on art years ago and I decided I'd write because that seemed like the right thing to do so I've half a novel sitting on my 
laptop. Okay. And I decided I'd have the character in the novel play with the wire mandala just as a character trait. So very off the side of things. Okay. Um, I Googled mandala and of course the first thing that came up was the fact that Carl Jung had drawn one every day for the latter part of his life. And I went, wow. oh, I'm having a synchronicity now with the man. Yeah. Terms of synchronicity. And then I drew one in my journal and it was just really relaxing. And I came home from Malta and I had to do my divorce and my house sale literally happened within two weeks of each other. So wow. two very stressful things right on top of each other. Yes. And um, I just would do them, turn off the television and I'd feel very held was one thing. Yeah. I kind of rediscovered a lot of wonder in the universe. Right. So I didn't, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I hadn't connected really with anybody or uh, I thought it might have been a little bit crazy. <laughs> to be sure. Honest. sure. And it was only after all of that uh, settled that I began to reach out to other people. Um, and I realized what I tapped into was something very ancient and very archetypal. Yeah. And the synchronicities continued and the opportunities would just present themselves to me, like literally. Um, and I would right. follow, I'd, I'd, I'd just go through with it and go, well, God will give them the courage, whatever I have to do. So. Yes, yes. Do I remember, hon, that you had a lot of coming through your dreams also? I do, yeah, yeah. That has been happening probably when I look back now, um, all my life, really. Yeah. And I remember being a child and I'd go down to the kitchen, I'd go, Mom, Mom, I have this dream, I have this dream. And they go, she would just say, it's just a dream, go back to bed, it's just a dream. You know? <laughs> right, perfect. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it's just Western culture, I suppose. It's just, it's not Sure, fun. sure. And uh, but in recent years, um, they have been coming back like go like really really strongly, and I do believe it's my belief that there's different types of dreams. So I have the usual, you know, the sorting out the daydreams, right? You're know, running around school corridors, that kind of thing, right? <laughs> you know, right. And then there's other dreams that are just the, the quality is very different. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I might receive words that I've never heard of or the names of deities I've never come wow. across before. Yes. Well, I'll just Google, I'll have the spelling wrong, but Google is a great oracle of Delphi. Right. Google throws right. it up. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I just find it astounding um, how yes. it's coming through. So I'm working at bringing the dreams through my artwork now, so through the mandala, so merging the two. Right, so right. Yes, I've, I've noticed that, Patricia, that uh, you're, you're not doing exclusively uh, the mandalas, which I just adore and, and find they're just absolutely so beautiful and so, uh, so powerful. Uh, but I see you also working with figures and uh, landscapes yeah. and things. Yeah, so, so sometimes the landscapes in the dreams are almost otherworldly. They feel like a, a different dimension. And often yeah, I can brought to the same like that. place. Yeah, the same place, but it's like another place, but it's not here. And right. The light, the light is very different. Yes. So it's very, very hard to capture that. I wish I was a better artist. I could capture, maybe someday. I hope that I can somehow bring it back. I try my best, but I know there's a heck of a long way to go before I can bring what I see back. I think you're doing just fine, my friend. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure you will continue to grow and develop. When you hunt, and when you said you were, uh, you were an artist. Uh, you were doing art in childhood. Can you talk about that? How that kind of stop yeah i suppose i would have always i just loved it as a, as a kid i remember right. going we live you know i live in dublin and we lived in suburban dublin and uh i remember my friend across the road deirdre had a party and he must have been maybe eight or nine she had a party right and my mother had brought the, the gift was a coloring book and markers and i remember going out in my house going across the road not making it to the other side of the road but just getting down on my hands and knees ripping open the present and starting to color <laughs> You know, well, this coloring book, so right. you can tell like the, the urge was there, you know. Yes, and clearly. Definitely, my family wasn't, uh, didn't really value creativity, right? Academic was the thing, so sure, it would always be uh, hide that, <laughs> you know. Yes, yes, and that's another thing that I really uh, I feel is a part of my mission as well, is just having that experience and overcoming all of the the fears around that and the, all of the I suppose, blocks that you have to break through to get yourself back, your yeah. creative self back. Yeah. Um, and that really feels, I feel very passionate about helping people do that. Sure. You know, and inspire them or they can come on workshops, whatever I can do yeah. to yeah. allow them to access that part of themselves again. 
Yeah. Well, can you talk me through a little bit of that? Because I'm really fascinated with your process, both individually and, you know, what, what people might experience when they come to your workshops. I mean, what I hear you saying, my friend, is, you know, you have a, uh, uh, you've always had a really deep connection to, uh, you know, spirit, source, God within you, whatever name you like. And, uh, you know, it has, it's not always easy or effortless, but you do know how to find that in yourself. You go there often, uh, you work from there, and you know how to help others find that in themselves. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. So what I would do is I offer, they're usually one day workshops. I have done retreats in the past. I just haven't done them for the last couple of years. I will do that again. I just, yeah, working. I need to just another that'll happen. There's, there's only so much of you to go around, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and on the day workshop, what you do is you create your own mandala. So your mandala is like a container of spirit. It's a container or essence of spirit of you in that particular moment. And they're like little cosmic mirrors, so they can bring up stuff. So, you know, my first three years of creating mandalas, I cried into them. I cried. Really? Into, yeah. Wow. Well, that's and powerful. It would, it would be uh, maybe stuff that I knew about in, you know, my conscious reality. And there would be stuff that I would be completely unconscious of. Or it could be past life stuff, I believe. Um, right. The dreams would echo that, the healing that would happen within the dream landscape. Wow. And wow. so they're very, very powerful tools. And, um, you know, within on superficially, you know, you see the adult coloring books on a, on a very kind of surface level. They will calm your mind because you're using the, the creative and the mathematical sides of the brain. So you're balancing both sides of the brain yeah. and, the, and the pineal band. And once you start to do that, um, it'll start to take you deeper. And I believe they take you where you're ready to go. Sure, sure. So say we're working in a group. I hold a very... Um, close space so there's usually maybe 10 to 12 people in a group and um, we'll do deep meditation and um, the energy is held tightly so the group itself is a part of the mandala so you yes know, um, music or silence what do you what do you prefer when people are working when people are working um, uh, music and yeah. no talking you just go inward there you go totally inward right and, uh, <laughs> i like it, can, it yeah it, it can bring up a lot of stuff so a lot of people might have you know, and it, like some people would just sit down at the table, see a geometry set and burst out crying. <laughs> Literally. Wow. <laughs> He's going, I hate him, Matt. I was always told I was useless. <sighs> you know. Wow. It can come up that way. Or sure. it can come up where people have, I had a lovely lady who uh, it came up for her that she hadn't, she was Eastern European and behind the wall. She grew up behind the yep. wall and um, she hadn't, she, it brought her back to a time when they received their first colouring book and colours from a cousin that came from when the wall came down. Wow. It was just that moment of, I got color in my life. And it was just so beautiful to, to, ha to have that healing around these things. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, for everybody, it's different. Sure. Um, some people can sit in the group and they might have thoughts like, uh, oh my God, everybody else is better than me. I'm useless. Look at everybody yeah. else. You know, yeah. So it's, the idea of the group that I bring people through that process is, um, you know, listening to this inner voice, this inner critic, because we all have it. Sure. The voice implanted from childhood, from somewhere, probably unintentionally, hopefully. Um, You're very kind. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, we hope. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, maybe not as well. Right. But, you know, but just finding those voices, those, that inner critic, and uh, just listening to it with compassion and acknowledging it and saying, all right, that's interesting. That's there. Okay. Beautiful. And look at uh, you know bigger parts of your life and say, is there somewhere else? Am I doing that in work? Am I yeah. doing everybody else is better than me? Yeah. Or some people might um, have the thing where they what if I run out of color? What if this color runs out before I get around the edge? So there's a lack mentality. So they're they're worried about running out of something. So sure. Love, money, time. Usually sure. so we get sure. down to those basics. Right. Um, and I think once we shine a light of awareness on these things within ourselves, it's only then that they can be healed. Yes. We kind of, we, you know, that what I encourage people to do is just without judgment is to, I, I'll stop, you know, the creation process at certain points for people to, to check back in with, in their bodies. Wow. And what feeling. <coughs> wow. If you go off, your mind goes up, you know. Yeah. Off. So you're checking back in with yourself. Yeah. And at the end of the creation, it's the idea is to go straight onto the yoga mat and we do a very deep yoga nidra. Wow. So the yoga nidra is kind of seeding the, 
the, the work that you've done. Yeah. So, you know, it can, a lot of people have had huge shifts. A lot of people have um, really, really found their creativity and opened up to it. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Some people might find that it doesn't work for them. It, you know, there's so many modalities now that you find your thing. You sure. Know, your thing. Sure. <laughs> and, yeah. um, I, I hope I can introduce others to it and um, yeah. just find their auth authenticity within it. Sure. Sure. So it's like raising your vibration. So when you can get rid of all these blocks, you can raise yourself, your vibration up. And, uh, right. Yeah. So you're, you're very conscious of that, of raising your vibration and helping others to do that. Yes, absolutely. Right. right. Um, yeah, no, it's brilliant. I love what you're saying. It's, it's, uh, it's just fascinating to me. I'm just about to start um, teaching um, for the seventh time the artist's way. Mm. Have you ever looked at that or worked with I that? I do. I love it. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll get you on as a guest. Uh, yeah, I actually, when I, re I read it after I had begun, right? Study, you know, so it's probably two years in, and I kind of realized I had been doing a lot of what it just seemed yes. to happen. It just seemed to happen spontaneously. I don't know. Yeah, well, like you say, yeah. huh, there, there's, yeah. there's just, there are only so many, there are all these ways to unblock, you mm -hmm. know, and we all have the same or similar blocks, which is fear and judgment, basically. And like you said, it's held in our body, it's held in our unconscious mind. And uh, the great gift, one of the great gifts of art and creating is, you know, we get to express our feelings and explore our strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, we want to be in the flow of all that. We, we're born to create, you know. And we can do, we can express things that we just don't have the language for. Right, right. Are you mostly working with women? I'm just curious, or? Um, I get a few men in the groups sometimes. And, yeah. um, you know, and then sometimes it's all women, yeah. Generally, yeah. I would say 90% women. Yeah, that's my theory proven <laughs> once again at the moment, sadly, but there we go. Um, um, yeah. You know, I mean, and it's wonderful uh, because, um, you know, uh, let's, let's talk for a minute what your feeling is about women and women's power and women finding their voices and, uh, you know, how you're getting to be a part of that in this way. I think it's, it's huge at the moment. The energy is just bubbling up to the surface. And, um, you know, I think there's a danger in that you don't want it to be all men are wrong and all, you know, that, that, that by one coming up, into her power it doesn't make the other wrong it's the a lot of my work is about balancing the divine feminine and masculine and i really feel i personally believe men and women are different yeah equally as important and that everything is yin and yang you look at as da vinci said look into nature and you will find everything you need to know it's, everything needs that balance and if you look at the you know the structures the political structures and it's a very yang action oriented sure. world that we live in it's you yeah. know you go to the corporate world and it's do 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 and you don't stop yeah yeah the yeah. energy is softening that and, and bringing in space spaciousness mm -hmm. and this activity mm -hmm. and, and i'm a great believer in that and i think that's another part of my work is to, so it's all linked i mean you can't have sure. one without another i suppose is that bringing that and um, even when we do it as individuals and we do this healing as individuals. And I'm, I do a lot of, I read a lot of Jungian psychology and the idea of the inner marriage. Okay. Um, uniting yep. Within the self first, it has to happen where you're uniting the yin and the yang aspect. Uh, I think yep. feminine and masculine are too low just terms. So I prefer okay. to yin, yin and yang. Sure, that's and, uh, <laughs> you know, so It's your action and your receptivity. So you might see somebody who has loads of ideas but never can get them out into the world. They stay here. Sure. Um, or you might see somebody that is just going help for leather, action, 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 and no, not pausing for breath, or and yeah. then it becomes destructive. Yeah. So, yeah. but I believe, and you know, you can see it. What happens in the micro level happens on the ma macro level. Um, is my view so that you see when the yin is repressed, and um, you can see the earth being ravaged, the mother earth, she's being sure pillaged. Yeah. Taken for granted. So, all of these things, but you know, we can feel very disempowered when we look at the news, and uh, you know, you look at it and you go, "Oh my God, what the heck can I do?" Yeah. yeah. But I really, really, truly believe that you have agency in that. Right. When you begin to heal within yourself, uh, it ripples out around you, and much further than you will ever, ever know. Yeah. 
And I think more, there's a tipping balance. I think Clarissa Pinkola Estes, mm. uh, the lovely yeah. article yeah. you know, that was doing the rounds recently. I, I actually put it in my last blog. Yeah, you were made for these times. Yeah. 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 And it's bit by bit by bit, and there will be a tipping point. You know, and I think at the moment we seem to be going through something very, it's like the Kali energy, isn't it? It's the, it's yeah. the way, it's the, break, the, the burning of the forest, the raising of the forest before, before new growth comes. Yeah, yeah. But to yeah. keep hope. Yeah, it's, um, bless you. I mean, I, I just feel that, um, I, I agree with everything you said, of course, and uh, you said it beautifully. And I just feel that, you know, um, men need to look to women to uh, understand their inner life. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because women are so inherently, not exclusively, but, but naturally inherently, you know, connected to emotion and spirit and the earth, as you said. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just kind of, um, you know, uh, do, 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 and uh, think, 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 you think. And, you know, there's not a lot of grounding or a lot of feeling in, in so many men. So that's yeah. why I, you know. I think, I think, let's say you say yoga, so the balance heart and head. So it's like, it's like what you're saying, it's heart and head, isn't it? It's logic. Yes, and yes. Feeling. Yes. Yeah. And like, I can see, sometimes when I'm holding a space and it's just women, it's very special. And I think that's very important. Sure. I think it's also very important. And I'm seeing more and more just men's spaces where men can be men. Yeah. A friend of mine, Kali, uh, he has this place, uh, what's it called? Rancho. It's, it's in, um, up in Leitrim. Um, there are men who go, out, they go camping in the forest. They build fires. They carve right. wood. And it's just very beautiful to see that. Oh, sure. So oh, sure. energy being, being put that way. And then I think bringing those two together. So often the two spaces and then bringing it together. Yes, yes. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, I absolutely love that. And uh, I feel that is our work, you know, as uh, whatever kind of guide or way shower we are for, uh, you know, for this inner journey and to, to support and empower and inspire people to be willing to do what is often painful and uh, difficult. And um, most people have put off their entire lives, uh, you know, and, and drunk away and pushed away, you know, at every chance. So it's, it's um yeah it's uh it's a surrender process and it's it's great to have guides who know um the territory that we're moving through and it can look you know sometimes that it's all um easy when it's very easy when we look at social media very few people i probably could be more honest about it myself i say for instance this weekend i got through a right purge and you know, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. At the moment. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're giving both of us that space. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, for me, the, uh, uh, the last six weeks have just been yeah. fucking intense. Pardon yeah. my French, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, great. I mean, uh, we're kind of crawling out of the cave together yeah. and giving each other a hug and a pat on the head and saying, you know, we're, we're, yeah. getting, we're getting through this, but it yeah. is, isn't it? This new decade and uh, all these energies, Saturn, Pluto mm -hmm. conjunct is really just pulling a lot of stuff up from the deep unconscious collectively and personally. Yeah. And I think it's for people, you know, if you are thinking of, you're just opening up to this journey that there's so many of us going through it. And I think it's a lifelong journey. I don't think it stops. I, mean, I suppose we just disappear off the planet and we become the enlightened one or whatever. I don't know. No, but, you no, know. you don't get finished. <laughs> it's just on and on. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah weird. yeah but you know it, the the ups and the downs of it and that there are people there to reach out to and talk to and um resources there for you it's brilliant that we have the internet and we have the connection with each other yeah yeah um, so you're not alone right right yeah. yeah yeah i agree um do you have i hope conscious friends a, a conscious I do. partner I do. I do yeah yeah, yeah. okay good I i'm single but i have yeah right okay just just uh being nosy over here uh, yeah, um, I have a conscious partner and that's made a huge difference for me this last year because we can fight and fuss and, you know, argue and then cry and laugh and work through it all. Yeah. And she calls me on my stuff and I get to call her on her stuff. And, you know, it's, it's, it's helpful. But of course, good friends uh, can do that for us as well. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, bless you, hon. You're, um, you're such a natural teacher, Patricia. You know, and uh, you, uh, you know, uh, when you're lit up like that from being a little girl, 
with tearing open your friend's present to get to the to the crayons, you know, uh, it's an unstoppable force in your life, and it's the same for me. So, you know, it's just we're surrendering to uh, what we're called to do, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And sometimes the, the, what we're called to do, there's blocks put in the way. I suppose that's the maybe the initiation or the you know that if I you know if I look back on it and I didn't have all of those years in between, it would have been something very different. I suppose. Sure. 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 It to happen. So it's all part of it. The jigsaw comes. Oh through. yeah, yeah. The challenge. I hear you, hun. The challenge is to find the gift in the crisis. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, to ask for help and to be very honest and uh, to look at the world on fire and go, "There's a good purpose for this, and this too will pass, and we'll find our way with all of this." And um, but again, you know, it's like uh, um, having a meditative practice having a creative outlet, having a spiritual practice, you know, studying people like Jung, et cetera, you know, it gives us a well to go to, to uh, fill our own cup, doesn't it? Absolutely. And the more we can do that, I think the more it ripples out. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, you said you used the word agency a moment ago, which was, which was lovely for me. It's um, uh, in my channeling, it's about sovereignty, which is, you know, the same idea, which is as we can hold that truth in ourselves, and offer that to the world in our prayers and in our thoughts and words and actions, then, you know, we, we start to be different uh, and we become a, a new choice for people to make about how to live in the world with greater authenticity, you know, greater, greater empowerment. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, where, where can people find your, I could sit and chat with you all day, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where um, can people find you and your work and your, and, and do you want to talk about your book a little bit? What's, what? yeah, actually I have, um, what happened was when I left my job, right. Uh, COVID, this, this could be another half hour. I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> when I left my job, God, it was September, 2017. I got an email two weeks later from a uh, commissioning editor um, in mentor books saying that he had been reading my mandala blog that I write about my artwork in the process. Right. And would I write a book? So I went, who me? Right. <laughs> and then I, went, I can't do that. And then I went, no, 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 no. Sit with it. And <laughs> to do it. And I, I did it. And uh, so this is it. <laughs> great, great. Okay. Well, who would you be if? Is it upside down? It is, darling. Yes. There we go. Much easier. Okay. That's even better. I like the first way. It was good too. Who would you be if? Yes. So it's yeah. It's a self empowerment guide for women. So it's the tools that I used in my own life to. Um, I suppose make that move from you know pens permanent pensionable job living everybody else's expectations of me right. being the good girl right right and, um, becoming a very bold girl who yes <laughs> but um I know, it, 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 there's a lot of wisdom in it it's like a little um because when i was divorced i i found it difficult to read um lengthy tomes sure so it's a lovely little one. So if you're going through crisis, um, you can dip in and out of this exercise. It's, it's, practical. Right. it's like a little toolkit. Good. Um, so you're overcoming negative thinking, cultivating resilience, practicing yeah. gratitude, creating yeah. visualization, all that good stuff. It's all what? in there. And then good. I've guided meditations to go with it as well. You can, okay. you yeah. can do them if you want. So that's the CD there. Okay, hon. Yeah, great. Um, so uh, you can get that either on CD through my website or you can get it as MP3 on my website. And that's at healingcreations.ie. .ie. Okay, good. Um, and your mandalas, do you, you do them for commission also? I do commission, yeah. I work with somebody's energy. I work, I work with your energy. So um, what happens is I would talk to the person to say, like I might uh, hop onto Zoom or Facebook, whatever. And we'll have a chat about what you like. So people would give me an idea um, of maybe the colours that they like, uh, whether they like a geometric or flowy. So we've got that much aesthetically. And then I work very intuitively after that. And <clears throat> often synchronicities will happen during that process. And or words will come to me. Sure. Uh, dreams will happen. And I'll share that with you. So it feels very much a he like a healing process as well as me creating an art piece for you. I think I'm also, to be honest, I'm, I'm transmuting some kind of energy as well. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, all right. Now, let's, yeah, yeah. Now, 
All right, now let's talk about that for a moment because that's a whole other that's a whole other chapter you've just touched into yeah. about being energy sensitive and working with that energy and all that. Yeah, it's like, it's that? Possible, like a, the more I'm doing commissions, I'm realizing like I can't. I suppose that's it's that part of me that goes, oh, who do you think you are? Right? Yes, dear. <laughs> the voice, right? But I can't deny it anymore that it's it's I will receive. You know, I'll say to the person, you know. Um, Say the uh, recent commission I'm working on, I said to her, you know, you need to be working on somatic body movement. I don't know where it came from. I should know. I should, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know where it came from. Sure. <laughs> and, I go, Where's that? And, and I get the text back going, yes, that's exactly what I'm studying. Great. So, so it's just, uh, or I had another one where I had these synchronicities where I saw eight peacocks up in Marley and then I saw eight swans down all in the one, the one day. And then I had texted the lady I was working on the commission for and birds are huge in her life and the number wow. eight wow just beautiful it happens i i i uh, just a towel i suppose i'm just <laughs> like a vehicle here i don't yes, know darling. i yes. can't explain it more than that and, and i don't want to sound like some kind of oh you sound fine sweetheart you're talking to one but, of the captain yeah, the weirdos over here i couldn't be happier yeah just that i'm humble about it and i i, I don't know it just happens yeah so, yeah well, sweetheart, I mean, that's the grace of your deep receptivity and, uh, and being devotional to, uh, you know, expressing what's coming through your unconscious mind. And, uh, you know, uh, you're in service to others, bless you. So, of course, uh, you know, they're asking for insight and wisdom and inspiration, and you're available for that. So, you yeah. know, it's kind of simple, but it's, you know, it's there, of course, for everyone. I mean, yeah. uh, you know... Yeah. Yeah. we're all we're all creative geniuses at birth and then society knocks it out of us and if we're lucky we find our way back to it i believe at some point yeah. Yeah. you know and uh whether it's a hobby or uh you know uh an oscar winning performance whatever you know however you find your way to uh we find our way to express our what's in our hearts that is a gift to the world like you're saying so uh you you, you should be blessed and your clients should be blessed uh, it makes perfect sense to me yeah yeah. I love doing the commissions, I have to say. And then I have my own work as well that I do, um, you know, as I feel, or it could be from dreams or whatever. So you can right. see all on the website, so you'll see the original images. And I have right. edition prints as well, so that makes it a nice way to be able to. Yes, yes. You, you know, I, I, I cut and paste everything you put out, uh, Patricia. <laughs> you know, I'm just your biggest fan here. My apologies, but I just, <laughs> I find them, oh my God, so... Such, you know, I mean, of course, I, I we have a little bit of a connection here, you and I, which is precious to me, and I'm so grateful for that. But, um, you know, uh, it, whoever did them, I'd be going, oh, my God, that is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I want to share that energy with people. So it's, I uh, hope that's all right. I hope you don't mind that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, let's talk about Carl Jung for a minute, because that keeps coming up. And he's dear to my heart as well. Do you want to share your journey with Brother Carl? I, yeah, <laughs> I suppose that, that it began with that mandala and then me, you know, looking up his work on synchronicity. I just find everything he has to say, you know, that, that, that idea of the inner marriage. And um, I do a lot of dream work with a woman called Tokopat Turner. Okay. She's based in British Columbia. Um, okay. On Island. Okay. And um, I just saw Vancouver. And she holds dream school. Um, wow. And she would come from the Jungian perspective but she brings it into a more yin energy um, and it is so powerful so yeah. Yeah. working with it in that way and the idea of the inner marriage and you know the, the symbols that come up in my dreams the archetypal you know you worked with archetypes um, yes yeah it is phenomenal <laughs> sure sure yeah to me he's a he's a towering figure uh, uh that uh you know like the beatles you know yeah. He went into the depths, didn't he? You know, he yeah. So brave. Oh my God! Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, actually, the the friend who I'm doing the artist way with, Marianne Adams, who's a uh, who teaches at Crawford, uh, um, and is an art therapist and teaches art therapy. She's mad for young as well. Uh, you know, that's part of her uh, medicine bag. And um, yeah, I mean, he just is such a great uh, translator about uh, the inner journey and the unconscious mind and. Uh, you know, as you say, archetypes and mandalas and the collective unconscious and the inner marriage and, you know, so many things that we just take for granted. And he was uh, the creator, the discoverer, the, 
the the sharer of those That's ideas. The bravery to to kind of you know to separate from Freud at the time, and to yeah. his whole yeah. career and his whole you know, I suppose what what's the word? Um, well, he was a rebel. He was yeah. a rebel, and oh, he lost yeah. to walk through it in his life, like say financially and in terms of kudos. You know, he probably would have been um, a derisive figure. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think well, we're, we're we're used to that yeah. story, aren't we, Patricia? Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I think of a quote from uh, Gandhi I posted recently uh, that reminds me of uh, Carl Jung and uh, I hope of, of all of us who are trying to help uh, change the world. Gandhi says, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. You yeah. know? And it's kind of like, you know, if you don't give up and you keep true to your, your values and uh, being humble, like you said, you know, and uh, being in our hearts and supporting and helping each other, uh, yeah, then things change for the better. And I, I'm sure that they, they will continue to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, great, great. Well, sweetheart, I just adore you. I'm so happy to catch up with you. Thank you so much for sharing some time with me. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So uh, what, do we have your next workshop? Uh, is that scheduled yet or that's to be determined? Um, my next, well, where do I, I am in Glendalough in Wicklow in March, that's booked out. Then I'm in Galway at the end of March, so the space is on that, and Schlieve Aughey Centre in Galway. Okay, great. And I'm in Cork, and Cork is unfortunately booked out. Then I'm in Wexford and Carlo Kilkenny. And I will have a Dublin workshop coming up soon, so just, if you subscribe to the website, um, I keep you updated, so I don't, it's probably maybe one email a month, and I'll keep you updated on workshops that are coming up. I'm hoping Sligo, and Mead, Mead days from Mead. Okay. Do you, yeah. do, you, do you get to the UK, uh, other places? Uh, I have done one in London. I haven't been, I, I, I actually find it really strange. I, I don't have, most, a lot of my work, my original work, and that sells to Norway, hugely. Okay. For some reason. And well, they're very also, bright over there, but, yes. Yeah, and the US, but England, the, the UK is very little. Mm. Mm. For next door neighbor. When I look at my web statistics, I think it's really odd. It's just odd. It just hasn't. Sure, sure. Okay. Where in the U.S. I'm curious. Uh, uh, all over the U.S. All over. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. So a lot of friends, a lot of yeah. Good. Good. There. A lot in California, North Carolina. Um, okay. New York. Right. Okay. The art centers, the creative centers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I had my work. It's that's actually on um, display for St. Bridget's Day in the Irish Embassy in Turkey. Anchor. I saw that. I think yeah. I saw your photo of that. So it was lovely to get that email to be asked to do that. I was like, yeah, oh, Turkey. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So Bridget is off in Turkey now. Right. Did you go? <laughs> did you go for a visit, or you just sent? Oh, no, just just the artwork, not me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the next time. <laughs> right, right, right. Interesting. Well, yeah. sweetheart, brilliant. Uh, I, I'm just so proud of you. Keep up the good work. I know you will. Yeah. Thank you, and thanks very much for having me. Thanks. My pleasure. I just um, you. <laughs> Pleasure. Patricia Fitzgerald, healingcreations.ie. Go and get you some. Uh, she's, she's got it going on, my friends. Love you. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye. All right. Bye for now.